Hi, my name is Patrick Desjardins, and in this episode, we will go in the example that we saw in the episode about using cons instead of let. Uh, we'll going back to these examples because I went very fast, which is fine for most people who already knows about cons and let. But let's dive a little bit more slowly this time on the the code. So the first example uh, had. The use of only cons, no let, no var. We can see that the first line is max length and it's setting to 10. So right away, we know that the max length of anything, we don't know yet, we haven't read the code, but we know that it's going to be 10 from this time that you read the code until the end of its life. So there's no confusion. You can imagine setting the max length to let, for example. Then you have this cognitive load of remembering that this variable could change. However, now, as we read this together, we know that it's going to be 10 for all the execution time. Since it's at the top, it means that if it's used within any uh, functions, it's going to still be 10. The first function execute uh, contains two parameter string. This is the nature of the parameter. They're not necessarily cons or let or var. They're just input and they can be changed so we have already two variable now str and str2 that we have to keep in mind that uh, can be read or change if we uh, want to the first line is const x and at that point we're building a string from a curly, uh, square bracket and we're calling a function and the output of this function will be concatenated and set to x and from that uh, and under, it's always going to be the same variable, which means that we uh, don't need to uh, remember uh, or think about x in terms of, oh, it might modi be modified after uh, that line. If we go and jump into the shortened function, which is the second function, we can see at the first line that we're using the max length that was set to 10. And we know it's still 10, as we have explained a little bit earlier, because it has been that as and declare as a concept. So what we're doing here is we're just doing a little of a condition and then we are uh, taking the first 10 character and we're returning it. So this can be debatable if we, uh, if we return a single time or second time or many times in a function. But since they are very short functions, we can say that it's still fine for that case to return a direct. It also means that we don't need to have a let variable at the top of the function and then assign a value if it's greater than the max length and later on uh, if it's smaller than the, the, the max length. What we're doing is that we're doing a condition on a constant and if it uh, comply with the condition, we return right away, uh, which is kind of like a, a constant. Like we're returning something, it cannot be altered. That function has also returned str at the end, which means that we're just returning the same string as the as the input if the link has been smaller or equal it means simply that the, the link is smaller so we don't need to do any manipulation on it so reading this shortened function is pretty easy to understand it's like one condition and return it's a return that is uh, not changing so if we go back to the function we can see that cons y is reusing the same logic but instead of having a square bracket it use uh, uh, the parentheses so we can already know and very easily know that y is simply uh, the, the the extraction of the 10 first character all that because it's all constant in our head and the result is also a constant which is x plus some space plus some y so we already know that it cannot be more than uh, 10 plus 1 plus 10 so 21 characters well the result is returned and then uh, execute in the console.log If we check the second example now, we can see that we're starting with two let variable, str and str2. Then we're uh, setting the max length to 10, like the first example. However, this time is using the let keyword. The issue with the let keyword is that it can change. So even though we won't change it, it still 
possible that somewhere, somehow, some when, that somebody's going to change it. Because when reading that uh, declaration, it says that we can alter it anytime. So the cognitive load will be higher because you never know what you're going to read that it's going ha- to it's going to change or not. Compared to the other one, the first example, we were sure that it would still stay at 10. So if we go back to this example here, we're checking the same thing to see if the, the, the string is, has a higher uh, length than uh, 10. And then we use a substring to uh, simplify it if uh, required. And uh, we're setting it back the result to the STR because we're, we know that we need to just uh, reduce it. And then we move on by concatenating the square bracket. And then we move to the second string. We do the same thing. Uh, we modify the uh, first variable and then we put the parentheses. So a few things here that we can argue. We could say that, oh yeah, instead of assigning the str to str or str2 to str2, we could have uh, created another variable, another let. Um, but here again, like we're just adding more cognitive load, uh, creating like four, five variable with let, which means they can all change. So the five change that we can have with this code right now is the same as the previous one, which none was changing. So the cognitive load increase a lot because this is only like about 12 lines of code. You can imagine on a big, large code base, how much stuff you need to keep in mind when changing something, because you never know if it was supposed to be a constant or not. So there's uh, no insurance that it won't change. It can be changed by other people. And then it, kind of confusing when you're changing something and somewhere else breaks. So it's increased the amount of accident you can have. And also it's harder to decouple now. If I want to extract the, uh, the actual code into something else, since I don't know which part are constant, I cannot just extract a part where these variables are used because it's let. It can be used all through the, the scope and can change its value. So it's harder to refactor as well. So if we go step by step here, we're going to have the same result as before. We are checking the length, we are assigning, returning the second one, and uh, concatenating everything. So overall, same amount of, um, about the same amount of lines of code, but way more uh, complication in the future. So here we are in the third example. The third example use a for and a var. You could use a let as well, but not a const. This is simply because of the nature of the for that is looping. And during the loop, what's going to happen is that it's going to increase or decrease a variable or do any, any, any kind of execution. And the last part of the for is what do we do at each loop? And here we are incrementing, which is often what we do with a for loop. Uh, so what happened here, if we use var, it means that we could use the i after, because the var is, all, uh, as we remember, the var that is uh, i in that example is hoisted up. So it's not belonging to the for loop. However, if you, we use a let, then the, the variable i is only uh, available in the loop. So in that particular case, we should always use let. And it's the same um, thinking of the cons before. We want to try to reduce the cognitive load of each developer to figure out, is this variable going to change uh, farther away of where it's used? In that particular case, if we put a var, it can change anywhere in the scope of the function that is using this R. However, if we use the let keyword, we know for sure that it can only change within the for loop, which is three lines of code. And if we are really honest here, it's one line of code, huh? what is inside the for. So definitely here, a let would be better. So this is it for this episode. Uh, I hope this example was providing more uh, highlight above the, the, the code that we had seen before. and. Uh, you should follow up for uh, more uh, su- supplemental uh, content about all the other videos in the future. Thank you.